Um, thank you so much for that introduction, <laughs> Helen. And uh, yes, I am, um, I am MP for Newcastle Central and a shadow minister in the Cabinet Office, so that does make me a politician. Um, but first and foremost, I am an engineer. And uh, as Helen said, I actually studied uh, electrical engineering here at Imperial College. And um, I'm not sure whether you can imagine uh, the pleasure it gives me to come back to Imperial all these years later and find that it is dominated by women. <laughs> it may be for one night only, but we have <laughs> to make it last longer. And um, the reason I've called my uh, presentation Reclaim the Bite is because, yes, in engineering, uh, we are pushing uh, to get women to be a whole, you know, 20% of uh, professional engineers. Uh, but in computer science, you know, there was a time when the whole world's computer programming talent was female. So there, we are just looking to reclaim, you know, part of what was entirely ours at one point. So this is me, this is my background. Um, I was elected in 2010 um, as Member of Parliament for Newcastle. But before that, I had spent 20, 23 years, in fact, working as an electrical engineer. Um, I joined the Labour Party when I was 16. Uh, but I decided that I wanted to go into science and, or engineering when I was actually about nine. Uh, so politics and <coughs> science engineering have pretty much been my whole life. And now I can't speak, and, and neither yet can Helen, uh, to the success of my political career. Um, but I can say that as an engineer, I had an absolutely fantastic time. Um, the pleasure of being able to wake up every morning and knowing you're going to do something that is enjoyable and satisfying. That is the most precious thing in the world. And I worked all over the world. Uh, my first job was as a hardware development engineer working for Nortel, living in London. Then I worked as a software engineer uh, living in Paris. Uh, for cable and wireless, I uh, did a lot of work on global networks, particularly in the Far East. Um, my favorite uh, commute was when I worked for Telligent in uh, the US. I was living in Washington, D.C., working in Virginia. And uh, every day, as well as driving through a lovely national park, I passed the newly built CIA headquarters the George Bush Center for Intelligence. <laughs> I'd always put a smile on my face. <laughs> and, um, and then I also I worked in Nigeria building out um, GSM networks. So I was always an exception, you know, as these figures show. And indeed, um, that figure there, the fact that over in 25 years, the proportion of girls studying electrical engineering in this institution has hardly changed at all. That made me absolutely determined when I did go into politics, when I was elected, uh, not to wait another 25 years before making a difference. And so if you're looking at, you know, how, why uh, to get more girls into engineering or ICT, then the question, of course, you ask yourself, why did I go into it? You know, and uh, Leila mentioned this earlier, why did I? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, this is, I grew up in a council estate in Newcastle. There weren't very many, there were no scientists or engineers, um, but I did have fantastic teachers uh, who taught me all about great scientists like Archimedes and engineers like George Stevenson, who was brought up just down the road. I, preferred him, not just because he kept his clothes on, but, um, <laughs> um, and uh, 2001 was my favorite film as a child, but I have to say I also 
really liked uh, National Velvet, and I never thought of becoming a jump jockey. So, um, you know, it's impossible to say there are so many different factors which influence our choice of career that what the only thing that we can say, I think, with any certainty is that there is no single solution. I know, but there are many <laughs> challenges to address, and we can be sure, you know, that whatever there's no one solution, <laughs> but that is definitely not part of it. This is the iPad Femme, the world's first female-friendly tablet. It's pink with yoga and shopping applications. So that's part of the, that's definitely part of the problem. And it is a problem, you know, it is a problem. It's a problem because ICT has so much to offer women. You know, as an engineer, I worked all over the world. I had great jobs, well paid, uh, f flexible, uh, satisfying. I'd say that the achievement of which I am probably um, the proudest in my engineering career is this, um, which is the um, wireless um, backhaul network in Nigeria that I helped build out when I was there in uh, 2001 to 2003. So that is still working, still helping you know, Africa's most populous nation communicate with each other. You know, lots of really important stuff. So I'm sure there's a bit of gossip on those phone lines as well. But whatever, you know, that, that is an achievement. That is something I'm really proud of. And that is a kind of career and opportunities that engineering offers women. And also, women have so much to offer engineering and STEM because, you know, it, diversity is not a nice to have, you know, it's not, a, it's not an add-on. Diverse teams are absolutely essential for to be creative and to be successful. And we need to make sure that, that, that the technology that we have is not just developed by a narrow proportion of society. I mean, imagine what kind of technology we could have if it was developed by a representative proportion of the human race. You know, and by that, I said this, I said this once on Twitter, and I got the impression people thought I meant that technology would get all pink and fluffy. Yeah. That wasn't what I was talking about. What I'm talking about is that if we have technology which is developed by a better, a more representative proportion of humanity, it will be more humane, and then we might actually like it, you know, as opposed to this. <laughs> um, I've got to say, this is, I believe, the worst rollout of new technology ever in the history of the universe. Though there is an awful lot of competition, you know, including an operating system that tells you to press Control Alt Dell to start and then to press Start to end. Uh, but so that's why it's important. And our industry says it wants to change. As Shadow Minister for Innovation, I wrote to the top 10. Uh, tech companies in the UK and when you get a really impressive letter heading as you do as an MP It's amazing who will respond to your letters <laughs> and uh, I asked them how, what, how, what proportion of uh, Their engineering or tech people were women But also what they were doing to improve that and I've got to say these are the people I wrote to I was actually really impressed by the responses well apart from Google and Microsoft who wrote back but refused to tell me the proportion of their engineers who were female uh, citing confidentiality, which um, made me think either they have so few engineers that are women that revealing them would um, we'd reveal their names, or they don't know how to protect your data. <laughs> anyway, um, everyone else um, did write back, and you know I was actually you know got to say this really impressed. Oh, they talked about the importance of female role models. They talked about networks, you know, we've got this great event here, Finding Ada, Ada Lovelace Day. I do really think that we have the moment to change. 
You know, because there's so every the company's industry says it wants to change. Politicians like me say we want to change. Uh, schools say they want to change. So media says there's been great uh, coverage in the media today. The media says it wants change. You know, we have an opportunity here to really be part of a change in society. Um, and that's, you know, because I think what I just want to finish on is this isn't really, this isn't about girls and it isn't about boys and it's not about women, it's not about men. It's not about um, some abstract idea about gender parity. It really is for me about the future of the human race because technology, science, engineering, mathematics is a key part of that future. And we all need to understand it if we're going to take part in taking those really key decisions about our future. So, you know, it is, we all agree that we want change. It is up to us, to everyone in this room, to do, make sure we hold their feet to the fire till we get that change. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>